Gamers. I'm Jamie, joined as always by Little Callum. Hello, Callum. Little Callum? That's the most yeah, patronising name you've ever called me. I just felt like calling you Little. <laughs> and we are now joined today by a very special guest. He is the one and only Mr. Rocky Romero. Hello, Rocky. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you guys doing? Yeah, great. Oh, thank you. Is it late for you guys over there? Is it, what time is it over there? Pretty late? It's to nine. Oh, okay, it's not too late. Yeah, not too bad. What, whereabouts are you at the moment? I'm in Los Angeles, uh, so what, it's like 12.30-ish? Yeah, eight hours behind, I believe you are. Yeah, about eight hours or so, yeah. Yeah, hey, not bad to be in Los Angeles. It could be worse. You could be, <laughs> True. You could be in Hull, you know? Right, right, right. There was an earthquake the other day, though. Oh, I mean, us. I, I, mean, if, I yeah. guess with the nice weather comes the earthquakes. It's Right. Yeah, That's, so you, fair it's enough. A get, it's a give and take wherever you go, I feel yeah. like, right? Yeah, we, we don't get the earthquakes. We don't have nice weather, but we don't <laughs> right. do also have the uh, highest amount of crime in the UK. So, you know, oh, wins and losses. There you go. Wins and losses. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I was just saying, I uh, appreciate you taking the time to speak to us today, Rocky. We're big fans. And it's been a an interesting week, to say the least, um, in the world of Rocky Romero and the Good Brothers. Uh, I want to bring it up straight away. Uh, talking shopper mania. Uh, it was classed as the worst pay-per-view of all time. I, I thought it was one of the best. <laughs> <laughs> you're, yeah. you're the ve- of the very small minority that thought that. So I don't uh, know. I mean, if the idea <laughs> of the pay-per-view was to make people laugh, it succeeded. Oh, very cool. No, uh, yeah, it's been a uh, it's been a crazy whirlwind this last week, uh, especially like the last ten days or so. Um, I can't believe that we pulled it off somehow, and I can't believe that it, you know, people are still talking about it, even almost, you know, almost a week after the pay per view. Yeah, uh, it's it's just pretty wild, and uh, you know, even after like Raw this week, it, it, it felt like it, like whatever happened on Raw, like with the uh, the underground thing or whatever, it, like just stirred up Talk and Shop of Mania even more because I think now everybody's waiting for us to spoof it. And yep. we probably will one day. We just got to see how it unfolds. <laughs> that would um, be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see. But um, but yeah, I mean, uh, it's been crazy. Like the amount of uh, feedback from the wrestling world, uh, people who are casual fans, like uh, you know, in the entertainment world, have been reaching out and like you know, like you know, that's one of the reasons I was late for this this call was like uh, there's just like so many people that are reaching out who who want to see what we can do and, and want to want us to do more content like that. Yeah. So um, we'll see what happens. I mean, I don't know, you know, like uh, I, I definitely didn't think, uh, you know, none of us expected, the, you know, the reaction to be the way it was, you know, it has been and so positive, uh, you know, so I don't know. I don't know. We'll see where it ends up. It made me laugh because we, we spoke to uh, Cal and Doc last, the week before um, the pay-per-view happened, we spoke to them. And I was like, is there going to be another one in the future? What's the plan? And he was like, well, we're going to need a good buy rate and good interaction. <laughs> right. uh, the first tweet after the event, he was like, fuck, we're going to have to do a second one now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I put out a crying emoji because I was like, oh, no, we have to do this bullshit again. Yeah. So, <laughs> and I don't think uh, it's going to be just one a year by the looks of it. I, I think know. it would need to be like, you need to make it into a full-time promotion Put it on a Wednesday. You know? <laughs> That's the Wednesday night balls right there. <laughs> yeah, I think I think we 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 might win every week. Finally, yeah. we might be the end of the winners, uh, just to see what kind of crazy shit we're gonna do, especially if it comes from Gallows' head. So, oh um, yeah, was yeah. it was that all from his head then? I mean, I know it said on the show like it was the brainchild I, of Doc Gallows. Yeah, but... I would say about eighty percent was was from gallows or at least started from gallows you know what i'm saying so like yeah he he kind of told us the concept you know once it, when the guys got let go from wwe i would say within a week or so gallows had called us and gave us the famous call of like hey uh you know i'm gonna do this pay-per-view from my backyard you guys are either in or out and we're like wait what, what like what are you talking about and then, uh, and then all of a sudden, you know, I, we're like, okay, well, you know, it sounds cool. I mean, you know, of course we're going to support you in, you know, whatever way we're all business partners. So, uh, I think, you know, we're like, put it down on paper, you know, we kind of talked about it that evening and then Gallus came back with like a rough draft. It, I mean, it, the rough draft was a little far from, from what the actual product ended up being, but, yeah. um, for the most part, a lot of the staples were there, like the boner yard 
and yeah. uh, some of the other stuff. And then the other stuff uh, just kind of came naturally, like as as people we found, uh, you know, what talent was going to be involved and we started writing stuff. So but I say a lot of it came from Gallo's this initial uh, just madness in his head. But he's uh, I mean, he's, he's he such a, a funny he's guy. Yeah. He's a madman, dude. Yeah. He's a really oh, funny. Yeah. He's such a funny guy. And no, I don't think that. Uh, I mean, if you if you pay attention to the content, you'll understand that he's a funny guy. But, I, you know, I think that's the funny thing about like WWE kind of missed out or not. A lot of companies kind of missed out about what what kind of genius this guy is and how well spoken he is and he's a wordsmith when it comes to to just uh how he speaks and um i don't know it, it, it's pretty cool to see that he can play multiple levels you know he can pay, he can be humorous he can be very serious and both are believable and both are great you know so you know i i, I think yeah. he's a he's an amazing actor yeah i mean yeah. when you think about it um how he was introduced to wwe um it and then compared to who he is now, you'd think it's two separate wrestlers based on how he <laughs> portrays them. Wouldn't you? That's actually uh, a good point. That's actually yeah. a very good point. Yeah. I, I, I said to my mum uh, last week, I was like, guess who I'm interviewing? It's like Luke Gallows. And she went, Luke Gallows, I know the name. So I showed her Festus and she went, Festus, I know him. And I was like, that's the same guy. <laughs> She's like, no way. <laughs> she went, should he be about 50 now? I was like, no. He just looked about 30 when he was 20. <laughs> well, that's it as well. I mean, I, I heard a story as well. Was it was it true that when when he returned to WWE, Vince didn't realise that that was the guy who was Festus? Yeah, that's a, that, I believe that's a true story. That I mean, yeah. Gallows said that before on the podcast. Yeah, that, uh, yeah, Vince had no idea. He was like, what? <laughs> he couldn't believe it either. It was like the rest of the world. Yeah, that's oh insane. But you got to imagine <laughs> all, all the people that Vince has hired <laughs> over the years. He doesn't know who anybody is, you know, no. except for a, a small group of people. <laughs> well, that's true. Oh. And it was um, it was all recorded in Gallo's backyard as well, true? Correct. Yeah. That yeah. Was in, 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 in the back garden, as you guys would say, and on your end of the yeah. world. But yeah, in the in the back garden. <laughs> uh yeah. No, uh, you know, he's got a beautiful piece of uh property there in, in uh in Georgia. And uh we, you know, we went through I, w- I mean you, you, you guys see me wearing a mask the whole time. That was like, shoot, because I'm like freaking out over this whole COVID situation. Yeah. And then I got to travel all the way from Los Angeles, all the way across the country to this thing. And I'm just like, we're all, we're all worried about everybody's health and safety. But, um, you know, thank God that uh, Gallows' wife is a registered nurse. So she, we made a COVID station. So we're able to yeah. check everybody's temperatures. Awesome. And, you know, uh, anybody who was feeling ill or anything, or if anybody felt ill, we were just going to cancel them. And, you know, still take care of them and everything, you know. So we had a kind of a whole protocol in place ready to go uh, in case, you know, anything happened. But um, thank God, you know, nothing happened and we were good. And it was, you know, everything seemed to work out. Nobody got sick after. So, uh, you know, I think we did a really good job. That's reassuring to hear, actually, especially when Talking Shopper Mania has one of the best COVID uh, testing <laughs> well you know you won't expect it but that's great to hear. Right. <laughs> it's the only way that me me and anderson for sure would have done it you know because like even um as things kind of got worse like we had we had set the date i would say maybe eight weeks before let's just say and um as we got you know we were expecting eight weeks before that things were going to get better and because they were progressing so well right mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden things started to take a dive and get com- you know completely worse in america yeah. so the literally like i would say two weeks out anderson and i we called the gals and we're like man we might have to cancel this thing and just or you know or or push it back and you, you know gals of course was like freaking out because you know he had he, he's the one who had put the most into it so it was like but he completely understood and then you know well we said why why don't we um why don't we do why don't we come up with a complete protocol so we talked to his wife came up with the protocol and then uh, that's that's when we like really started to take things seriously. And, and we, okay, you know, and we were ready to cancel if we had to, if things got progressively worse. And the funny thing is, the morning uh, that we started to shoot was the morning that Georgia decided to go back into phase one. Mm. So so we were like, okay, we're barely by the skin of our teeth. Let's get this thing done, get everybody back home, and and you know, get this thing over with. You know. Oh so, yeah. So you only yeah. just got it done. Yeah, by the skin of our teeth, I think pretty much. You know. Thank God everybody was on the ground there ready to go uh, when, when things went back to it. 
That's good. Yeah. Uh, did so? Did you expect that? Like after this, uh, the pandemic, the first wrestling event you'd end up at would be talking shop mania. I mean, <laughs> I think it would well, second, 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 because I did do. Yeah, we did do um, New Japan. We did do a, a taping of a four week oh. series called the yeah, Lions Break Collision uh, mm. that we that we taped uh, in California here. So, uh, but yeah. I did not think a second would be something as shitty as Talking Shop of Mania. I can say that for sure. <laughs> but, um, uh, you know, it, it was a blast. Uh, like, when we, first, we watched the first cut of it, and the first cut of it wasn't that crazy from the, sec- from the, the actual cut that went out to, uh, to the world. We, I was the only one that felt confident about it, but the other two were like, holy shit, like, I don't know if we can put that up. I was like, no, this is good. This is, I'm telling you, this is good, guys. I was, everybody, they didn't believe in their own stuff that they had wrote. And I was like, no, no, this is going to be good. This is going to be good. Well, there's some stuff that we got to fix on and edit, obviously. So we, you know, we came up with a bunch of ideas in the post. And, um, and then, uh, you know, and then I just like, I guess that's kind of where I fit in, like, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm better, I think at the, some of the post stuff, like what, you know, so I was able to talk to, um, our director and producer, Mike, uh, Moran, who was able to kind of take our concept and like, and then the funny thing is like, he would be like, are you sure you want to do this? He like, like he'd be second guessing because it's so af- away from what you would want to do normally. Right. You're trying to make things good. We're like, no, 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 no. We want this to be bad. <laughs> I can imagine that yeah. the problem. Like you watch it and you're like, this is too good. It needs to be cheap. <laughs> yeah. How can we make this work? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and I mean, so and we... I'm not saying how shit it is as well. I mean, Callum, you've watched it how many times now? Three times? Uh, four I've watched times? it four times now. Yeah. Oh, man. Uh, <laughs> the fun, it, it's just so much stuff going on, right? You have to watch it like yeah. three or four times to try to get everything, right? Because everything is so quick. There's so many like little That's one it. word or one yeah. liners from everybody. That's it's right. so quotable. I found like I found myself <laughs> quoting it already, and you know something's good when you start quoting it. I find right. Right. So, yeah, I, it's like Anchorman. When I watched Anchorman, I, I yeah. quoted that for about 15 years after. <laughs> yeah. And I think it's going to be and the same not the only one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh my God, that's so crazy. I can't believe we're going to uh, have to do another one. <laughs> that's the reason we've got you on. We're just trying to convince you to do another. <laughs> Oh shit! Keep on, keep the convincing coming. Uh, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll, we, we were the two, we were the two, we were the two buys, right, with Callum. Yeah, we were the two buys. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> two more than we thought we had. That's for sure. <laughs> and well, were... I was happy as well because we got. I, I, I said to the local last week, yeah, to Doc. I randomly got followed by Ben and Love on Instagram, which is the most bizarre thing that's ever happened in my life. So it was nice to get a little Vernon cameo. Um, <laughs> I just. <laughs> You know, when someone just comes out of the blue and I'm like, oh, no, I want I'm like, Ben and Love, like, it's got to be a parody. And I'm looking like, the real Ben and Love's followed me. Not You're on so Twitter. happy about that. <laughs> I, I was over the moon. And I just, I was just so random. It really was random. But, um, but yeah, going back, um, I've got to, I've got to, you've got to, like, be honest. Please tell me there'll be a number two. Because my whole life is evolving. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, you know, we, we've been talking about it. We haven't, nobody, because we're so like, the, the media blitz for it was so hard, you know, like everybody was going so hard and just like all the buildups yet. I, I think everybody, everybody's afraid to just say yes and commit right now because it's still so new. But uh, I, I think it's looking good, I can say. I think it's looking good. Uh, what was, uh, obviously with, with, with Cal and Doc Sander of Impact, what was Impact like? I mean, did they have input? Were they helpful? Were they on board? Uh, they were very helpful. Uh, you know, they definitely gave us the the support that we needed. They helped us actually find uh, the director and producer that we used, Mike Moran. Um, mm. They were helpful in promotion of it. You know, they were they had put up a um, uh, they put together a commercial for us that they played on air. They also um, gave us like a lower thirds when uh, when Carl and Luke uh, or Doc were out there, you know, doing their their stuff on TV. So, they, I mean, they were, they were very helpful in a lot of ways. Scott Demore, thank you, Scott Demore, you know, shout out to him for, for just uh, kind of just, he was there the whole weekend just overseeing and helping us if we needed anything, if, you know, because we hadn't ever uh, produced a pay-per-view, obviously, yeah. you know, ourselves. And uh, so just kind of like, you know, it was completely self-funded by us, you know, and, you know, so, you know, they, they weren't on the back end or anything, but they were, 
they were just there for kind of a like emotional support and and some mm-hmm. support when needed you know like uh we needed some music licensing they helped us with that um yeah so like they were very helpful and then just like the promotion in general because i know that that was a big factor obviously uh in, in helping to spread the word their pr team was out was very helpful so um yeah so i mean i i guess i can say you know that for sure uh going forward that um you know docs and and, and carl's deal with impact is you know is that that impact will be provide any support necessary for any yeah. of their their side projects which is kind of cool that's really yeah. cool that you had impact support like that. Um, yeah. I, 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 the first time I heard of it, I think, was through a promotion from Impact anyway. So um, I was like, what's talking Chopper Mania? Like, right. when I first heard it, I was like, what the hell is this? And as soon as I saw the trailer for it and it started coming together, I was like, I need to see this. <laughs> and then Fight TV messaged us the next day and said, um, hey, do you want to do a giveaway for it? And literally within... A few hours of it being up, it had hundreds of retweets already, people entering this giveaway for it. And it's wow. still now our most entered giveaway. We've done like, we did WrestleMania, we did Slammiversary, we've done AEW pay-per-views. Talking Shopper Mania was our most successful giveaway. I that thought Luke so and Pal this. He couldn't that... believe it. I was like, yeah, it, it's broken any record we had previously. That's yeah. That's... That, uh... It's it blows my mind. So thank you for the, my uh, the the traffic boost on our Twitter. It was great. <laughs> I mean, th- I mean, you're welcome. Thank you guys for for helping and supporting. I mean, I that's that blows my mind. The funny thing is, it just makes me think is like, oh shit, well, let's try to win this thing because nobody wants to pay 15 bucks for it. So it's like, let's try to win it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, can. that's what we thought at first. But you find that a lot of people are still like. Um, oh, sorry, we, we didn't win, we'll buy it anyway, because they've got it in the head, they want to watch it now. Right. And then when they don't win, they just buy it anyway, because right. they've already hyped themselves up so much. And so, people were so confused by it, too. They were like, wait, what is this exactly? Is it like a wrestling show? Because that's what we get, the feedback that we got from Fight TV was like, oh, we have a lot of our, our members that are, that are they don't understand what's going on. They're like, is this a like a podcast? Is this a, sh- a wrestling show? Like, what mm. what is this? And it's kind of hard to explain because it's like, well, it's kind of like a variety of, of it all. But I mean, yeah, I mean, it's it's basically a wrestling show, you know, so like, uh, but a parody of one, I guess, really. So, uh, so I mean, so I don't know if it was helpful, but I, by the end of it, we're just like, fuck it. If they, if they want to be in on this, they can watch it. If they don't, it's like, they'll hear about it from everybody else at the water cooler. And then they'll be like, oh, shit, we got to get go to go download it now. You know, so, I'm not sure if you'll agree, but it, it did remind me a little bit production wise of Colt Cabana's five dollar wrestling. Like, mm. you know the I've never I've never actually seen uh five dollar wrestling. Yeah, it was like it was an intentionally bad wrestling show. Like ah. if you was to pay five dollars to go to a show, you'd expect this is kind of what Colt Cabana would expect you see. Like the gotcha. production was intentionally bad. The camera crew were bad and the commentary was awful. And right. that kind of made it good because it was intentionally gotcha. bad. And that's right. what the same vibe I got from Talking Shop where you're watching it like, well, these guys know it sucks, but that makes it good. Because <laughs> if that was meant to be a real pay-per-view, that was meant to be good, you'd, you know, you'd like, what, what the hell was that? But you can watch it and go, ah, these guys are geniuses. <laughs> right, right. There's a difference. Well, I, was, um, I was actually, this is, I'm going to sound really professional now. I watched it the following day, and I watched it incredibly hungover. And it was just the greatest thing to watch. Hung over and laid, <laughs> laid on my sofa. <laughs> I was crying with tears of laughter. It was the greatest thing. Um, oh, like Callum so said, it, it genuinely has been our biggest thing so far. And that we've, we've oh, it's been, didn't we? Saying there's a lot of people saying who's the best tag team in the world right now? Is it the revival, the Young Bucks? It's neither of them. It's the '80s Russians. They're my favorite <laughs> tag team in the world. <laughs> <laughs> that's so <laughs> funny <laughs> that's so funny that, that, it was just, just the little things like that I don't know this could as the 80s Russians I mean I I popped so hard when they came out and I'm like who are these guys and then the name came up 80s Russians <laughs> <laughs> that was a gallows thing right there of course <laughs> yeah so I was like I was like wait who are you gonna book he's like I know these Russian guys we're gonna call them the 80s Russians I was like alright whatever <laughs> I was like, 
and then and then uh and then uh and then me and gallows came up with the 90s segment that came after that i was like well we got teddy long teddy long should do something and we had this whole other idea and i was like well we got these all these night these access to these 90s guys why don't we use the 90s guys and just do a shotgun of the 90s like as many 90s guys as we can get like and, and, you know then the he was like well the flock lives here i was like let's get the flock you know we try to get raven you know uh we had so many names that we you know we were talking to Scott Steiner there for a bit, you know. So like, uh, just like cra- just a crazy amount of people because nobody was doing anything, you mm. know, because nobody was working. So it was like all these people were available to us. So um, so we and that you know it just kind of just grew from there. And then I was like, wait, wait, let's have let's have. I was like, we need Austin. How do we get Austin? And I was like, no way, we're gonna get Austin. I was like, so let's put. <laughs> Willie Mac in there, you know, we have access Cold to Willie Mac. He's Willie a, Mac. <laughs> yeah, he's an, he's an impact wrestler. We, we, I know we want, you know, we definitely want to get some impact wrestlers on here. So, boom, you know, that's where, that's where Willie came in. So like we're the three of us just really work all, really well together. You know, we're so close personally and uh, you know, we've traveled up and down, you know, all across the world together. So it's like uh, we get each other's humor. We get each other's strengths and weaknesses and, um, you know, and uh, we all kind of carry the load, uh, w- which is helpful because we all have families and stuff, too. So, mm-hmm. it's you know, it, it, it's hard to uh, to be playing and doing this kind of stuff and then, you know, also have a, a serious life out of it. So it's like, uh, you know, so we're all trying to, like, uh, balance it all out, you know. But definitely we've do, after this, we've given uh, Doc the reins of the CEO of Talking Shop. So he's in charge <laughs> and we'll just kind of support him uh, in, in his in his uh in his craziness so uh yeah it's been fun though man it's been it's been been crazy yeah Yeah. what's your title are you evp (laughs) yeah i'll be one of the 20 evps of talking shop (laughs) (laughs) yeah definitely i i I mean i I love talking shop i'm i I've just spent a shitload of money at Pro Wrestling Tees, by the way, on Talking Shop match. Oh Um, thank you. Thank you. you, Did you get the talking shop of Mania one? I've got look, yes, I've got the PSC one as well. I'm just like, I've got to get these stuff. So, yeah, I've, I've well, spent, I've, pretty much, I'm not going to be paying my rent for the rest of the year. Uh, I month. appreciate it. <laughs> he, he thought that the uh, the interview with um, Luke and Carl was going to be video and in a couple of weeks. And then the, uh, the Impact contact said, oh, can you do tomorrow? And it's going to be audio. And the reason he bought the T-shirts is so when we're on the video, you can see the talking shop T-shirts. <laughs> and he was like, "I've just spent about hundred quid on the T-shirts, and we're not even doing video anymore." <laughs> you should have put. That's when you got to use your social media and just post it. Be like, "Hey guys," and and just put exactly that so people will click on it. It's like a yeah. Perfect <laughs> I did get to because I saw a doc put a tweet out with some new merch. I actually retweeted it and I said, "Look." I just bought mine because I want to give Doc the budget for talking media too. Everybody else should do the same. Yeah, hundred dollars, <laughs> that'll do. <laughs> right. <laughs> might it might help to sway us to put on the talking shop of mania too for sure. Uh, on, on, a, on a more of a serious note, like moving on, do you think we'll, we'll see Cal and Doc in Japan as well? Is there anything in, that of impact that can make that happen? Um, I mean, I, I know that they have a carve out in the contracts that will allow them to wrestle in, in Japan for New Japan. So, um, you know, I mean, obviously the world is still closed, you know, we, nobody can travel over to Japan. So, uh, you know, here's hoping that when things open up, then, yeah, then hopefully they'll be back uh, in Japan for sure. Yeah, I, I think that, that was going to be my next question, Jamie. What, like, are you looking forward to that idea of them coming back to Japan with you? Have you good back? Yeah. No, abso- absolutely. You know, I mean, obviously, I don't know what faction they'll join or what the, the you know, storylines will be. But, uh, you know, just having them back in New Japan would be amazing. You know, you know, I mean, that's their home. You know what I mean? I feel like uh, even though, you know, Impact is their is their their current home, I think that back, back you know, if, you know, they, they, they basically start you're not not gallows exactly, but, you know, it, New Japan changed both their lives, you know, mm. for the better. So I feel like that was really the, the, the starting point, the jumping off point for both of them, uh, in their, in their great career trajectory, uh, to see where they are now. So, um, I feel like it's important to their, to their, it's important for them to come back. And it's important, I think, for the fans to see them come back as well, you know, yeah. and I think everybody's super excited for it. And I think New Japan will definitely, um, 
it just, you know, obviously, you know, for me, I think in New Japan is like probably one of the coolest, if not the coolest promotions, you know, wrestling promotions on the earth. So I feel oh, yeah. like, uh, yeah, them coming back will will be a, a huge deal, and I'm curious to see that. And I and kudos to them to you know obviously the ratings and all the you know social media presence that they brought into Impact because I feel like you know Impact's been doing a lot of work over the last couple of years and trying to change the system and, and for the better, but nobody's really taken notice. Yeah. And they were able to kind of just package all that up and throw yeah. that out on their debut where like now people are starting to take notice. So I feel like um, it's pretty crazy that two guys who in WWE weren't uh, trusted to be able to, you know, you could put them on TV and they can move a needle that they could, they're moving needles all over the world. Uh, mm. You know, it with no buildup, you know, with hardly yeah. any buildup and it's just all them, you know? So I feel like um, it's pretty crazy and it's kind of cool. And, uh, you know, and I, I think for them, it's probably like a big F you to, to New York there and just being like, look what we can so. do, look what you guys had. And, you know, yeah. and it's like, you know, here, here they are doing their thing and, and they actually have a ton of fans, you know, that from all around the world that support them and everything they do, you know? So, and the momentum just keeps, seems to just keep going up and up and, uh, who knows where it's going to stop for those guys. Well, I think well, I've, been, I've, I've been saying for sorry, Phil, I've, I've been saying for months and months, and we spoke to Jimmy Jacobs a couple of nights ago, and I said the same thing to him. Yeah. For me, in the US, no one's putting a better product on than Impact. Not NXT, not AW. For me, Impact's the best product in the US, and then, like you said, New Japan for me is the best wrestling in the world. Um, and I think the success with that, I don't know if you agree. They seem to get long-term storytelling, you know. Whereas they, with Raw, you hear rumors of Vince tearing stuff up during the show. You get three weeks to get over. Um, right. Is that is that is that the key? Is that the key? Is that the long term? What's that? I'm sorry. Was that you kind yeah, of the last second? There. Oh, sorry, I said. Do you, do you think that's the, the, the success impact on New Japan and happiness because they book long term? Definitely. I think that that is the key probably to any successful, you know, wrestling long term is like is just is just having that that long term goal, that, you know, and what you get to. And then and then also respecting the fans, you know, like respecting that they have memories and they remember what happened a year ago. And instead of, you know, trying to create a new narrative. Uh, you you got to respect what happened in the past, right? Because that's the important part. Because these are all the building blocks of the story, right? Someone's yeah. you know personal story. So like, um, I I think that that's the the two key important things that um that I think uh, so, you know other groups are not respecting or doing, you know. And that's, and I yeah. think it's like it, it kind of insults the intelligence of the fans, a and then b, um, just like where does that like a character on TV, where does it go from there? If, if you don't, if every person, every character has a past and has a, a present and a future, right? So it's like you, they, you need to know where they're going. And it doesn't have to be now. It could just kind of naturally happen. And I think that sometimes, um, you know, in the, in the U.S., I think some things are so overproduced that there's no, like, openness for something kind of organic to happen, right? Yeah. And then when yeah. something organic happens, if it wasn't like, oh, if it wasn't produced, then it's like, oh, they start scrambling and they're like, oh shit, like that's not what we intended, but let's go the other way instead of just like, well, why don't you just let, let it kind of happen and see where it goes? Like it may be good. It may be bad, but at least you can make your reaction there. I but think that's what, that's yeah. what makes New Japan cool though. Yeah. It doesn't have that overly produced feel to it. It's, it's well produced, but it's not overly produced. Right. And you have those organic moments, but you also trust that they have a long term goal too. So right. they're they're going somewhere with the stories. But if things change on the way, they're fine with that. And right. you'll still get the same payoff at the end. And right. that's what you trust New Japan as a fan to deliver that to you. But with some other right. groups, like you said, you're watching it and you're like, I don't know even know if this story is gonna carry on next week, you know. So you can't right. find yourself getting invested because you don't know if it's just going to be chucked away. So I think you hit the nail on the head in, in that respect that, um, 
the trust, right? The trust of the fans to like trust where this is going, how much you can invest, like you said. Mm -hmm. And I think that New Japan has done such a good job of being that that fans know they can trust it, whether they like it or not, or that mm -hmm. moment, it doesn't matter, right? Like, but they know that they trust it that somewhere down the line, this is going to pay off in some kind of way, you know? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. But the prime example, obviously, uh, the other week with Evil joining the Bullet Club. I mean, again, we, we, that's what I love about wrestling is that element of surprise. Like, I don't go, I don't watch spoilers, nothing, nothing to that. I want to be surprised. And right. I, can't remember, I can't remember the last time, and I've been watching wrestling for 30 years, I can't remember the last time I was ever that, I, I'm out jaw dropped. Um, I was sat with Callum in the same room and I'm like, what the... I'm, but again, and I thought to myself, six, seven, eight months ago, there was that little slight descent with LIJ, wasn't there? And, right. Mm. You know, and, it, and that happened, and I was like, holy shit, this is just the greatest thing. I was, yeah. I didn't stop talking about, about an hour, two hours, that's all I was talking about. I was like, what the hell have I just seen? Like, right, right. right. You know, no, I, th I think it was, yeah, I think you're absolutely right. Like, if you think about it, right, whatever it was, eight, ten months ago, <clears throat> when then there was the dissension between the tightest group that didn't seem like there would be any kind of dissension, but like yeah. what, you know, if you think about, we're all humans, we're all wrestlers, you know, we're all trying to gain one thing, you know, we're all trying to be champions. We're all trying to do better for our families. You know, we're all, you know, so like climbing that ladder. And then when there becomes, uh, you know, a, well, how can I say it? Like a class system within that ladder, yeah. you know, you know, so it's like, if Naito's only the only guy that everybody's paying attention to, where do these other two guys go who are just as equally talented, right? Like mm -hmm. Evil or, or Sonata, something's got to break, right? And then you saw something a little bit with Evil with the fist bump. And then that fist bump, you know, we forgot about it. Everybody made up. Everything was all good, but we didn't know what was going on behind the scenes. And when we finally got to uh, the, the New Japan Cup and, uh, and Dominion, mm -hmm. then that fist bump turned into the two sweet yeah so like so you think about it how it goes all the way back around you know so it's like um but then you, the funny thing is like such you know obviously the casual new japan fan is going like what the hell that came out of nowhere that didn't make any sense and then you have to think about like you have to have kevin tell you the story and then you're like oh yeah. i yeah. missed that part and it's like oh shit okay then that makes you hopefully want to dive back into into world and go see like oh shit like that did happen, you know? So, yeah. 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 So I, 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 yeah, oh, yeah. I mean, you know, I, I, I definitely think that, uh, you know, like the characters in new Japan and, and new Japan itself is so like sport oriented and it's like, uh, based off of real human emotion. It's not mm -hmm. like, you know, somebody's sleeping with somebody's girlfriend and like, that's yeah. why they're fighting. And like, w which is okay. If that's what you're into, you know, like, like completely, I think that that's, that's fine. But um, I, I, I like that it's just simple. You can pick up where you let, you know, like if you don't watch for months, you just pick up like, okay, who's fighting who? Oh, this guy's going for the championship. Oh, okay, cool. I'm back in it. I don't really need to know too much, right? Like, yeah. it's pretty simple to pick up. And I think that that's what's important about it too, you know? And, uh, and that's like what I like. I like that it's just based in, uh, you know, centered and, and, and it's, a, it's, it's a sport and people are trying to win championships. Yeah, and that's yeah. the most important thing and it's you know and like for some people if you want like the um you know the soap opera storyline you th this is not the product for you you know mm -hmm. so and that and that's okay too you know if you just want to come in once a year and watch Wrestle kingdom that's cool you know like totally cool you know uh you know we're still gonna try to be the the best in um in ring action uh, you know that we can and and uh give you know fans a, a the best show that we can possibly do every single time, you know? Yeah, well, that you, you hit the nail on the head there as well. There, there are a certain group of fans, some of them even friends of ours, who do just watch Wrestle Kingdom. But after they've watched Wrestle Kingdom, they always stick around for, like, uh, New Year's Dash and, um, you know, sorry, um, the, the shows following, like, the month after. And, right, New Beginning and all yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And um, it, they do stick around with it for a bit. And they might go out again but you guarantee next year they'll be back for wrestle kingdom in like a month or two after and it's because they do just want the, the payoff for those matches at the end and get, wrestle kingdom's always going to be a good show it always delivers right and it's like I, i'm not a big fan of the the nfl for example but i watched the super bowl just right. because it's a, a spectacle spectacle yeah yeah yeah, yeah. 
And you, you know there's fans who don't watch wrestling, but they'll watch WrestleMania. And I think that's what's so cool about wrestling in general is that the lapsed fans or the casuals can just go in and enjoy it for one night. And even if you are a wrestling fan, you can do the same with New Japan. You can just watch it for one night. And like you said, you can just go jump back in with New Japan and say, right. oh, right, he wants the championship. Cool. And you're back in. It's easy to do. And I don't feel like that is the same for every promotion. Like there are some where you do have to go. Oh, well, I, I didn't watch uh, Raw for two weeks. And I watched it, and I was like, right, now they're all fighting underground, and it's Fight Club. What the hell did I miss? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Right, wrong, right, right. It, I secretly so loved it, it, too, though. I actually didn't mind it. I like, like it, it was a little goofy, but I was like, I don't know. I liked, I liked the way they presented it, at least. You know? yeah. like, at least it was like something interesting as opposed to like whatever they were doing before you know like well, and it made me want to watch at least yeah you know? yeah that's it i saw someone put a tweet out the other day because there was still people complaining and this guy said look at least they've tried something different and you know you can't you can't knock them for that right but, um, but going back to new japan like Callum was saying and actually we've got a, a friend uh, shout out to our friend rivers and he was the same he watched uh, i think wrestle kingdom and he was just a casual fan and then next time we saw him he was like I need to see more New Japan. This is Okada. Okada's <laughs> the greatest thing I've ever seen. Now you're attacked into my New Japan world. That's awesome. <laughs> and he's a like hard seller as well. He doesn't have really? any subscriptions. Yeah. He, really? Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. oh, that now, now, so... now for him, yeah, Okada's the greatest thing in the world to him. Now. It's like, <laughs> Okada, this, Okada, that. It's, oh, wow. That's the appeal of New Japan. Right. I love I love when we can convert a, a hard fan like that, you know, who's, you know, I mean, because, you know, money, money is money, right? Like, you know, like, you know, you, you work yeah. for it so hard. Yeah. It's hard to it's hard to decide how to spend it. And there's so many options to spend it. There's AEW, there's WWE, there's Impact, there's New Japan, yeah. there's Ring of Honor. I mean, there's uh, GCW. There's so many places to say, you know, Rev Pro. So it's like, uh, you know, where do you spend your money? And because you only have so much of it that's expendable, right? So, like, for somebody to make the commitment to New Japan World and be totally in, uh, I, I'm just very appreciative of them, and 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 I, and I know all the wrestlers are too, and and the staff because we work really, really hard to make a, a, a really good product. And you know, for most of our business, you know, it is live events. So, especially the people who stuck around with us during this shitty ass time you know yeah. that that stuck around and kept their subscriptions and helped them keep new japan going was like big you know it was big emotionally for for i think everybody involved so uh you know shout out to everybody and thank you for you know everybody who who kept with it and uh you know through the time you know because we did all we could to try to make as much content as we could you know during it you know uh fresh content releasing older stuff that we could finally get back to you know because I think a lot of people are like, why doesn't New Japan do this? Why doesn't New Japan do that? It's like, New Japan technically is a very small company compared to like a WWE who's mm -hmm. just have so much money and so much influence that like, like literally at the drop of the hat, they could pay for all these different things, you know? So like, and we're, we're a budding company coming out of, you know, like not a budding, you know, been around for 40 something years, but like uh, went through a really tumultuous time financially and, you know, have and really have coming out of that now, you know, doing well. But obviously, uh, budgets are always going to be tight and always extended, even though, like, we push it every year, you know. So it's yeah. like, um, you know, it's a slow process to as we make a change. And plus, it's like a Japanese company. So, you know, like some things are certain the way that they do things aren't exactly the same way that they're going to do it in like uh, America or the UK. Mm -hmm. So it's like they're learning those business models and how to appeal to uh, those fans in, in a different way, because maybe their system is completely different. Right. You know, so like, um, so, you know, bear with us. Cause it's like, I feel it's all a learning process and uh, I feel like every year it gets a little better and a little better and a little better. And uh, you know, eventually we're, it's all going to be figured out, but uh, you know, Rome wasn't built in a day. It took a 40 years to build this system in Japan. So mm -hmm. it's like, it's probably going to take, you know, 20 something years to build a, a proper system in the UK and the, in the U S you know, I think the, the interesting thing is, um, like you said, it, that new Japan isn't as big a company as say WWE, but if you used to ask the fans, I don't think they'd think there's much difference between the two. The way new right. Japan presents itself is that of a big company. 
And I think a lot of companies, well, a lot of fans might, if you see WWE as the number one earning company in the world, I think a lot of fans would say New Japan must be second. Like, right. in terms of, it might be number one in product quality, but I think they'd say it's number two in terms of earning too. And I would be surprised to find out it's not, to be honest with you. Right, like, right. The way it presents itself, it's like, well, how can that company not be number two? And right. that's just you see, that's you see the production of Wrestle Kingdom and you're like, holy shit. Exactly, you know, like, yeah. You know, like, so how yeah. Can, yeah, how can that not be the second, like, you know, right. from a fan? I don't know anything about the business. I just know it's, is it owned by Bushi Road? Is it? It's owned by Bushi Road, yeah. It's owned by Bushi Road. And I would say we're probably like 10% of WWE, probably. <laughs> you know, or it's something crazy. like that. Or, yeah, it's probably somewhere between like 5 and 10%, I think. I think. Mm. Don't quote me on that, but like, I'm pretty sure it's something like that. So, yeah. I mean, so it's a very small company relative to WWE, you know, like very small, you know, so, yeah. which is crazy. But like, like you said, like uh, big time production values, especially on the big shows and the ones that are, are, are massive, um, you know, King of Pro Wrestling, Dominion, you know, Wrestle Kingdom. So it's like, um, yeah, I think, I think for most fans, when they see, especially casual fans, when they see Wrestle Kingdom, I think that they get confused on how big New Japan really is yeah, exactly. compared to, like, WWE, you know? So, yeah, so I, it's I pretty can't interesting. Any, yeah. any other company that does it as big as New Japan. Mm -hmm. Like, I, we went to All In in Chicago, and that was an incredible show, especially that was what was, show. at the time, an indie, the right. biggest indie show ever. Uh, the production there was awesome, and... You could tell it was going somewhere with AEW, and AEW does big shows too. But even then, it still doesn't feel like it's on the same level as in New Japan, and that's backed by a billionaire. So right. you're like, what is right. it that New Japan does, does differently to present itself? And I think it does come down to how seriously New Japan takes itself and believes in its own product, because mm -hmm. it it the way it's presented, you, you're like, wow, that if these guys think this seriously of their own product you watch the the talent in the ring it's just captivating so i think there is just i don't know what it is i think it is just down to present presentation and yeah. how the talent believes in the, the product too right. right you know definitely presentation i think and uh i think and how new japan promotes its stars to like and top stars like they really feel larger than life uh, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like they don't yeah. like, and especially like how the systems are like, obviously like, you know, there's a young lion system. So, you know, that's like the bottom of the barrel, mm. like, you know, where the bottom is and you know exactly where the top is, right? Yes. So, is. You know? Yeah. So, yeah. So it's very easy to understand, look at, and then you see like, you know, Ibushi, uh, Tanahashi, Okada, Naito, like how, how those guys are promoted and how they're like, uh, presented, it's it feels like holy shit. These guys are the top of the business right here, or like yeah. whatever you know. So like, I think that there's definitely that a, a lot to do with that, and I think that New Japan does a really good job of 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 creating stars and really putting them, you know, giving them uh, the spotlight that they deserve mm -hmm. uh, in a positive way too. You know, they they never try to make their stars. Uh, look bad they're always constantly trying to make them look good you know and i and i think that everybody works together within the company even the wrestlers to make the stars the stars too you yeah. know what i'm saying as opposed it's not like uh maybe in other systems it's kind of like a me 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 and where like new japan really everybody works together collectively for one reason to make the company better yeah and that's the only reason you know so like uh and everybody kind of feels like if I can be a cog in this system, I know that it's it's not like it's greatly appreciated as not like um, you're just a cog. You know what I'm saying? Like each person yeah. has a role and each person gets their time and each person gets their moment. But like um, right. it's not like you're just doing it just to do it. You know, it's like and this is also what the long term storyline telling. Right. Like like you see like the guy grow from the bottom. Mm -hmm. climb all the way up and will he make it all the way to the okada level we don't know we'll have to wait and see you know like and you but you watch that as opposed to just being a guy in the system and that you know you just show up every once in a blue moon absolutely know? yeah like when you look back at okada in his younger days 
And like even at Shinsuke, for example, um, you, it's like when we were saying about um, Luke, you, it's hard to believe it's the same wrestler because they've right. evolved and um, progressed so much. And Okada has always been fantastic, but he's never, he's not always been the rainmaker Okada, you know, the, the, the ace of New Japan. And if you were to look back and go through New Japan world, and watch his story. It's like watching a film, watching someone progress and get those big wins, which led to his first world title, which led to the five star matches. Whether you put mm-hmm. any credence in those, it's still a five star match. And you know, it's it it's just fascinating watching that story. And you can do that with anybody in New Japan, like even yourself, for example, in the tag division and stuff. You can still watch your story progress, and you, it's not even over yet. Your story is still going. And right. I think that's that's what's exciting. So speaking of your story, what do you want to do when think when shop opens back up in New Japan and you're back there? What's next for Rocky Romero? Uh, well, I can say presently, New Japan Strong. I don't know if you guys have heard about New Japan Strong, but every Friday night uh, in the U.S. Saturday morning in Japan, uh, on New Japan World, we have a new show that'll be debuting this Friday. Mm-hmm. Uh, so. So definitely check that. I'm not sure what what time it starts uh, in the UK yet, but uh, we'll have to find out. Yeah, we'll put yeah, it we'll in the description of the video. Please, please. But this is like, uh, you know, it's a it's a new show, new concept. So anybody who watched the Lions Break Collision shows, it'll be something that's similar to that, but obviously on a bigger level. So um, starting out with the New Japan Cup USA. So I think that's pretty exciting, and uh, I, I think it's going to be like um, definitely like if it's anything like Collision was like the hardcore wrestling fans will love it, you know, for sure. So like, I think it'll take some time for a more casual fan to get into it. But, um, but definitely the hardcore fans will be like all about it, which is, which is cool. It's also, um, I'm, I'm guessing eventually it might be on fight TV, hopefully. So it might be, uh, get some more, uh, uh, coverage with that. that we'll see. Cool. Yeah. I, I don't know for sure. Don't quote me, but, um, you know, I, I hope that it would be on another platform for other people to see eventually. Yeah. Um, but New Japan World is where you can see it every Friday night. So, like, I'm excited just to get back in the ring and, like, compete, you know, like, normally, which would which be really, really cool. And then um, and then besides that, once, like, the world opens up and we can go back to Japan, um, I want to get a best of Super Junior in. You know, I mean, I, I'm sad that I wasn't able to do it this year. I, You know, I started to get my training in and get all excited for it. And, and uh, even it, when kind of COVID first happened, I was like, there was still that small chance of like, oh, okay, cool. We might still be able to do it. And then obviously it got taken away. So like, uh, you know, I want to wrestle Hiromu really badly, like really oh. badly. I want to, you know, yeah. I'd like to work with him. I'd like to, uh, I just kind of want to bring, you know, I feel like the junior division, so many people left and became heavyweight Shingo and Osprey and like, uh, you know, so I feel like there's a lot of holes that are kind of left open and for somebody to kind of, take you know what i'm saying so i think like uh uh even show did a great job uh, uh you know in, in this uh in this kind of new situation that everybody's in he kind of took you know took the ball and ran with it so uh, you know props to him but i would like to uh you know show that the old guy still got some 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 gas in, in the tank and so uh, there could be another junior yeah. heavyweight championship in that would be that would be the ultimate goal that would be the one i mean uh you know i i yeah i want it as black tiber tiger as a young man like really young and not really fully grasping or understanding the situation i feel like i i didn't take advantage of, of it as much as i could now you know and i and i feel like um to like represent the company as like an as a junior champion i feel like i don't know i could do more you know what i'm saying yeah. I, I think i could really do more with it uh around my waist you know so like like even to say like as an os you know like Osprey was a, is a great champion because he's so good at what he does in the ring, like top, top. Right. But I feel like, uh, there's like, I feel like I could represent the junior heavyweight division even better than Osprey could, you know what I'm saying? Like in that fact, and maybe not match quality wise, because he, there's probably nobody better than him, (laughs) but like, (laughs) but just as an ambassador, uh, worldwide, like all over the world and kind of like, really work on trying to take the championship and make it something uh, on a global level. 
I think, yeah. uh, and, and more, you know, and just different kind of exposure, I think I could help with that. Um, and, and that would be my, my ultimate goal. If I, uh, if I do anything before, uh, you know, I, I get done in this business, you know, completely, at least in in-ring action. Well, before you wrap up anything with your career, I personally, from a selfish point of view, need to see another Rapongi Rapongi Vice reunion anywhere. I mean, <laughs> that, was, that was one of my sticking around points for New Japan was the tag team of Rapongi Vice. It amazing entrance theme. Thank you, thank <laughs> yeah, you, brilliant. Thank you. Composed Classic. by yeah. yourself. Yeah, composed, written, everything done by myself. I made the beat. I uh, recorded it in my kitchen, and wow. uh, I made. Yeah, I made Trent do the recording, I think, somewhere on in a hotel room on tour. And then, uh, yeah, threw it all together. And it is what it is. I mean, I think that that was I think it was definitely a big part of the success was the theme song, you know, and like, oh, for it's sure. pretty crazy, you know. So, um, yeah, I, I still it still plays on my phone. Like when it pops up, like randomly, I'm just like, oh, yes. <laughs> Okay. okay, I forgot what how good this that is. Yeah. yeah. You know, when you're younger, you think that every wrestler sings their own entrance theme. Like I always thought Triple H sang his theme before I knew about Norton. <laughs> I thought, you know, that's uh, hilarious. Vince McMahon sang his theme. I always thought wrestlers sang their own themes. You that's actually, right. did. yeah, yeah, <laughs> I actually do. And I force myself on other people too, like poor, poor show and yo. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, no. Uh, and, you know, that, that's like a big part of it. And um, I just wanted to, you know, I think like obviously the theme music is such an important part of the package of a wrestle, right? Like it, 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 it's got to represent him well. And a lot of the times I feel like just like the, the, the type of person that I am is like, I don't want to leave it to somebody else because they're probably not going to do it the way that I want them to do it, you know? Yeah. Or, and it's, or, or and like at least like here's another way for me to make a connection with the fans um sorry to make a connection with the fans that uh that's on a more personal level like creating my music and like them understanding that i sang it and made it you know it's like then there's like another level to this thing you know which not just like what you see uh you know on your screen or whatever you know so like that's kind of like uh the type of wrestler that i think i i want to like i've always wanted to be but didn't know how to do it and never really got the opportunity and then, you know, within the last, you know, five, six years in New Japan, I've really been able to to do that, you know, like create something that is mine that I can, you know, relate to, you know, the fans can actually like relate to and be like, oh, shit, Rocky made this like that's even cooler. Like, this is why I like him or this is why I think he's an idiot and I hate the song, you know, so like either way, I, I you know, I think it's I think it's cool and it's a way to connect in some kind of way, you know, you're, right. you're absolutely right, though. With a, an entrance theme, it can have a make or break wrestler. Like, for yeah, sure. Imagine Stone Cold not having the glass shatter on his theme, right? It just wouldn't work. If he just no. came up to another theme, right. it wouldn't be Stone Cold anymore. And I think it's the same with like even Okada with the, the coin drop and little, little things like that to the theme really add to it, personalize it. And I, there's so many wrestlers who I think like would they be a big star if they didn't have that theme? Like it, I think right. it takes up breaks a career sometimes. Right. Um, you know how many times I've told Yoshihashi, I'm like, you like your theme, man? <laughs> and he goes, he goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. But then I realized I just I heard a story like not that long ago, a couple months ago or something, where where he actually told the story of how he got his theme, and it's actually a sweet story. Like I guess that. Uh, he has a friend that was like, like he would go to the same gym or something with, and the friend uh, he makes music on the side, and uh, they would work out together and they would talk. And he always knew that Yoshiashi wanted to be a professional wrestler, so like Yoshiashi had tried out a couple times from New Japan, didn't get accepted, then finally got accepted, and then he told him, "Hey, uh, his friend told him, when you debut, I'll make you a song." And he goes, "That would be awesome." So the friend, when once Yoshiashi debuted. Uh, that guy wrote the song for him. That's and really uses cool. that. I'm like, you should have said that fucking seven, eight years ago when yeah. you debuted. And you would have ripped him for it. Yeah. yeah, I wouldn't have ripped him. Then everybody would have been like, oh, that's a great story. I could get into that fucking song. I'm like, why didn't you tell anybody this for fucking the last 10 years? What's your problem? I'm like, 
I'm like, everybody just thinks your music isn't that great. <laughs> like, like it doesn't but really, it really match wholesome you. story yeah. behind it. No, but I was like, that story is important to this whole thing. I was like, God damn, why would you not tell anybody that? <laughs> so, oh, that was brilliant. Oh, yeah. So now, now I can appreciate it, though, you know, now that I know that backstory, you know, now I have some feeling. Otherwise, I'm just thinking, like, I don't know if this really matches you, like, but now that I know that it's a part of you and it means <laughs> something to you, then now it's yeah. like, that's cool, you know? yeah. I think that it's a lot of things like that in wrestling, isn't it? Like, right. Uh, it wrestle the the in ring action is a big part of it, but a lot of it is the the little details outside of the ring too, like the entrance beam, the attire, or just continuity and stuff like that. I mean, right. I how did you come up with a uh, Rapongi Vice, for example? Who was that your idea or? Just I I, I knew I wanted to make us well. Yeah, I knew. So I was in the UK. And, and, uh, I had gone over for like two weeks. I had like nothing going on in Japan. And it was like after, after Kozlov. And I think I was like floating around for a little bit and, uh, trying to figure out what the next step was going to be. And then I, I knew that me and Trent wanted to team and we were going to team, but we didn't have any ideas like at all. And then it was like, started to get close to the debut. It was like, let's say like three weeks before or something like that. And we, were, we still had no idea what the name is. Like, every name that we come in, we're like, oh, that's so stupid. That's so stupid. So then um, I think I was I, know, I was in, like, a car ride, like, sitting in the U.K. somewhere. And then uh, just popped into my head, like, why don't we make it Rapungi, which is, like, the foreigner district in, mm-hmm. in like, you know, like, the night entertainment foreigner district in, uh, in, in Tokyo. Why don't we name I was like, if we use Rapungi, like, Japanese people think it's cool. Probably people who are outside of Japan will think it's interesting, you know? So it's yeah. like, uh, and then, so, and then I started thinking, well, what can we put within? I was like, I don't know, something Miami Vice came into my brain. So I was like, oh, Rapungi Vice. So then I actually sent it to Finn Balor. I was like, what do you think of this name? Before I even sent it to Trent. He was like, dude, I wish I would have thought about that. <laughs> he was <laughs> like, I would have used it. So I said, oh, so good. I know it's a good idea because you're the guy who came up with the Bullet Club. So that's good. <laughs> yeah. Okay, cool. So yeah. then... Uh, it's so the best to create the Bullet Club because it's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So good. Okay, good. So then I sent it to Trent. He was like, oh, he just gave one of those. So then I knew he liked it. Like, <laughs> So then, uh, uh, so yeah. So so yeah. So then that was it. Then, we, you know, I, uh, I gave it to a buddy of mine to create a logo for it he did an awesome job creating the logo and then it just kind of like once we got that step in kind of everything just kind of filled in naturally yeah. and then it became time to make the song and i didn't really have any ideas but i knew of like the feeling that i wanted you know so uh so like once i made the beat like li- like i wrote the whole i did the beat and wrote the lyrics in probably an hour and a half like it all just kind of just flowed like you know and like it all and like i knew i wanted to be feel like a chant because you know yeah. obviously wrestling we love chants right you know so yeah. like that's an important it's part of it and sing along to you when you come out it's, and it's yeah. just easy to remember yeah like you know like that's what i wanted it to be so um as opposed to uh you either have like a really uh, something in the beginning that just pops right like a, like a stone cold thing or like I hear voices in my you know whatever it yep. is you know so like you either have that or you have like you're waiting for something to happen like the chant as you go onto the ring so like I knew I wanted to be a chant so like I wanted people to be able to to bounce with it and mm-hmm. sing it back to us as we we're coming to the ring you know so like then that that's when the Rapungi Rapungi lights Rapungi that's when I yeah that came came out so make it real simple and uh, and that's how the song was made. Yeah, it worked though. Like I've yeah. always heard that because I remember hearing that you uh, actually produced it, and I was like, I, I, it's why I've got trust issues with wrestlers' themes because it's like if some, my mom told me you do know the wrestlers don't sing their own themes, <laughs> and I was like, oh, what? And now you're telling me they do. So I, I don't yeah. Know. <laughs> do you know what happened? It was it was that dub, double double J storyline that fucked you all up. You know. Yeah, like, that's when it. You found yeah, out that Road Dog sang yeah. it, and then they had to fight over it. I mean, that's like the whole thing. You know? Like <laughs> that's where you have trust issues forever. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, um, literally, Rocky. I mean, before we skyped you in, Callum looked at me. He just went, Jamie. Rapungi Vice. So I knew it was coming up. <laughs> His little face lit up. I knew it was coming up at some point. That's um, awesome. 
Hey. Before before we obviously let you go, so I've got to ask you one question as well. Um, I, I, I was obviously I do, I do my research because I try to be professional. Professional. Um, it says you were trained by Inoki. Yes. So I've got to ask what that was like because obviously we don't really get to to mention him very much. So, but I mean he's a huge star. What what was that like being trained by him? Uh, very interesting. Very intense. Yeah. Very intense. Basically, like, um. You know, it's like training with, like, a Muhammad Ali or something like that. You know, like, somebody who's just so smart and, you know, got this extremely larger-than-life, almost, like, in Japan, like, godlike persona, you know? Yeah. Saying? Like, like just somebody so famous, so iconic, so very intimidating, uh, but also, like, very cool because, like, so many things that were – that he said or did – that didn't exactly register at that moment, but resonated somehow later in life or later in my career where I was able to remember it and be like, oh, that's what he was talking about. You mean like oh. a karate kid with wax on, wax off? Yes. Realized, I swear oh, to God, yeah. like karate kid. Well, I did, the, the funny thing is I was thinking that, but I didn't want to say it. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yes, exact, exactly like having a mentor uh, like, like Pat Maria in Karate Kid. Like, but like, Obviously, you know, uh, I can't remember what Pat Morita's job was in, in the movie, but like, but this guy is like the guy who created, uh, you know, strong style and, yeah. and, and new Japan professional wrestling. And, and like, really, you know, there was two guys who took Japanese wrestling and like made it what it is now, you know, it was Baba and Inoki. So it's like, um, just very, and, you know, basically created modern mixed martial arts, you know, yeah. <laughs> like, like, uh, you know, so somebody with who has done all these amazing things uh, to train with them, and like, and I used to get my ass kicked by him. Like he used to like stretch us like old school, like snake pit style, like in the dojo, and uh, it was uh, it was cool, man. It was cool, and um, to spend time with him, even like outside of the ring. Uh, I know he's not doing very well right now. I heard his health is kind of bad. He's got like a rare condition, so I hope that. Uh, I hope he's all right. I haven't seen him in years, but, um, uh, you know, just to, to spend time with him outside and like, you know, him invite me to, you know, have a whiskey with him at like midnight and I'm running down to Rapungi and I'm like, that's cool. He's staying in the dojo. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's like, what is going on? You know? And he's like handing me a cigar. I'm like, you know, like, I don't never smoked a cigar. I'm like, like drinking <laughs> well, whiskey. Having a you take it. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> with the boss, you know, like with the boss of bosses, you know? So it's like hanging out with the Godfather, you know? So it's like, yeah. um, just a really great experience, like all together in that. And like, um, I don't know, just, he's, he's somebody that I, you know, I joke a lot about, like, and I tell some funny stories about him, but like, uh, you know, cause it was just such a crazy time, but you know, really a mega influence on who I am as a wrestler now, you know, definitely. And there's a lot of stuff that goes back. Uh, like I said, that things, little nuggets of, of information that he said that were, um, super important to, to my career and still stuff that uh, I, I would quote to another young wrestler now, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, as a, as a lesson uh, to learn in this whole thing. Because this thing is that we do, wrestling is extremely difficult. It's not easy, you know. And, like, and for some people, some of the parts are easy, you know. Like, like some of the physical parts are easy. For some people, some of the, uh, you know, uh, like promos and stuff are easy for some people. But to be like a completely well-rounded wrestler with all these great tools in your toolbox i mean yeah. it takes years to uh, to truly understand what you're doing and like uh and and get really good at them you know um you know and and not you know i've never really had a like a career of like uh you know i've had moments but it's never been like you know like a a, a uh, a booker or somebody, you know, said, or a company got so behind you that like, you know, kind of all these things kind of happen more naturally for you. It's like, I had to like figure them out for myself sure. and, then, and then make them myself, for, you know? So like I had to go to Mexico. I had, I went to Mexico for one reason. I, I was like, people said I wasn't charismatic. So I, I was like, oh, okay, well, where should I go to study to really just fucking let loose. And so I went to Mexico, the place where you can let loose. And it didn't matter about uh, your wrestling because I knew how to wrestle really well. So I was like, okay, I don't have to focus on that. I can just focus on being a character and, and working on character stuff. So I went to Mexico 
and and it was hard you know like i left a good paying gig to to just try my you know to just learn this like system so it was like starting over you know as like a young lion all over again mm -hmm. and then had to find my way back to to japan from there and like you know the crazy route that died took. but like i was willing to do that because I didn't like that people said I was bad at one. I didn't have this one skill, you know? Yeah, that, so. that's respectful though, that you you did that because do you feel like now you're a more well-rounded performer and do you feel like if you didn't make that move, you, you might not be where you are now? Did it all pay off in the end? I think so. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I, I think it, it, uh, it paid off in the end and I, I definitely think I'm a more well-rounded performer. Um, just, so, you know, and, and just the life lessons that I had, you know, in general, just, you know, living in, in another country and, and, uh, and like, you know, pretty much starving just to, <laughs> to, to put myself through call, you know, college. That's how I was thinking about it, you know? So, um, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm fortunate that everything worked out, you know, it definitely could have gone another way, but I'm fortunate that I, I learned what I learned. And I think that it's important to, you know, what I'm doing now as a performer and yeah. as uh you know one third of talk and shop i think is it's important too you know uh and, and being a podcaster and and uh and just an entertainer in general i think that uh, i'm glad that i went out well, and forced myself to do that you know i just like to say whoever had the uh the goal to say you wasn't charismatic all those years ago find them again and show them talk and shop a mania <laughs> yeah exactly and, yeah. and then there's a lot of them out there there's a lot of them out there <laughs> Even when but, I was in Mexico, they they kept saying, "Oh, he's not charismatic." I was like, "I'm so charismatic." I was like, "I'm just <laughs> yeah. not. I'm just not what you guys like." Not everybody is going to be doing like if one person is charismatic this way, then everybody expects them to be charismatic this way. There's like yeah, there's so many different spectrum, it? levels to it. Yeah. yeah, and the differences. It's like so. Um, it's just funny. It's just funny now and then. Uh, but then you know, it's it's the same thing that Gallows and Anderson went through. You know. In, in just a different sense, you know? So, um, you know, sometimes you have to to leave a place to, you know, open the door to, you, you know, your future and to actually grow to be yourself, you know? So, um, you know, hey, it's a part of my story and I'm happy to have it, you know? Hey, dude, it's, it's actually been fascinating hearing about it all, like the, from the talking shop of mania to New Japan and hanging out with Inoki and stuff is absolutely fascinating to hear about how, what's going on behind the scenes and stuff it's, it's always cause cool the fans to know like how talk and shop was put together and stuff and what i'm hoping is if there is a second one which there will be because we've we're gonna make a campaign to get one done <laughs> i mean the best I bought, I bought the fish decks, yeah <laughs> we're, we're pretty much investors at this point that's true so, that's true um, that's true got the t-shirts so. to prove it <laughs> If that's the case, um, it would be cool to get you back on down the line, Rocky, and uh, discuss Talking Shop 2 or even just your return to Japan and see what's going on there as well. Because it's been great talking to you. I could probably talk to you for another hour, but I don't trust my Wi Fi to actually stay connected. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but uh, absolutely great talking to you, Rocky. And thanks again for coming on. I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. Everyone, please check out uh, New Japan Strong every Friday night, Saturday morning. Uh, check your local listings for, I don't know when it comes out but check it out newjapanworld.com um, I'll find out like I said I'll put them in the description as well uh, links Perfect. to New Japan World and everything as well uh, did you want to plug your socials? Uh, yeah find me at uh, Azuka Rock A-Z-U-C-A-R-R-O-C uh, I'm on Twitter Instagram uh, tech, check out Talk and Shop uh, podcast if it's wherever you listen to podcasts whether it be Stitcher Apple um spotify we're on all of those and uh I, yeah check out you can check me out pro wrestling tees.com backslash rocky romero and we also have a patreon for talking shop which is really awesome there's a lot of extra content that goes up there we do an extra podcast every week um there's like three levels we do some video stuff uh carl anderson gives you workout tips every week so there's a lot of cool stuff on there and then we do um once or twice a month, we'll do what we call boozing with the boys. And basically, we just all get on together with all the fans and we just drink beers and podcast live with everybody, take that questions. Put people, it's actually a lot of fun. So we, especially before any event, we'll, we'll usually do it like we had. a We had one two weeks ago when the guys uh, finally got released from their contracts and they, we mm -hmm. did um, 
we taught we dropped that YouTube video, uh, the YouTube podcast. Uh, what do we call it? Countdown Fucktown. Uh, hold on a second. Somebody's calling me from I don't know where. No, there you go. And then, um, so we we were on there with Boozing with Boys. We had AJ Styles come in uh, for that one. So like we had like over two hundred people hanging out with AJ. AJ, you know, said a bunch of stuff. We all cried and stuff. It was all beautiful. And then we're all drunk. And then, <laughs> and then, uh, and then, just last week, right before the uh, the pay per view, we did a um, we had a about an hour long talking shop, uh, and Chris Jericho came in unexpected and came to hang out with everybody uh, for a couple minutes. So you never know who's gonna pop in. So it's definitely worth the subscription uh, on Patreon. It's like twenty bucks a month, and uh, it's definitely worth okay. it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's really cool. Yeah, that sounds yeah. really cool. Like you never know who's gonna drop in. Like yes, yeah, yes. that's Legit. really cool. <laughs> Legit. Yeah. Well, I am subscribed. I am, but I think I might get the Patreon as well because you've got all my money for the match. So <laughs> you, you might as well take the rest. <laughs> might as well go all, all in. Right. The, the whole thing. It's basically the it. it basically you know helped us really uh, fund uh, talking shop and mania. So I mean that was really yeah. important. I mean we were really having. Uh, most of the stuff that you know we've done, we we haven't really um, taken any a dime of it personally. We've just reinvested it for the fans and for the the, the business of talking shop. So like we're really working hard on trying to build the brand, and um, you know we appreciate everybody along the way who's bought merch, Patreon. I mean it all is important to what we're doing, and mm-hmm. uh, definitely fun. It gives us the uh, you know we're able to do it. You know put out our creative vision because of it. You know yeah. so like. We really thank you guys, and it's it's money well you know well well spent when it if you guys are happy with the content, it's money Absolutely. well spent. Absolutely, sure. yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, and and I'd like to thank you as well because I work at the hospital, so when I get a break on my lunch, talking shop is on my, <laughs> on my phone, my ear, my, my headphones are on. So you guys can awesome. keep me going on at work. Like, so, That's awesome. So I thank you for that. I appreciate you guys. Yeah, no, thank you. No, like I said, it'll be great to get you back on, Rocky. So um, looking forward to talking to you again down the line, whether that's for Talking Shop or not. Uh, but thanks again for joining us. And we've been Ringsiders Wrestling. Thank you for joining us too. We'll see you next time.